Well, she's also, I believe, an a, uh, archaeologist by training. She is. So she, she has That's a historical view of right. as well. And I think, I think she's been in town for many yeah. years. Yeah. She grew yeah. up here as a child. Well, I certainly yeah. recognize the name. I just mm -hmm. don't yeah. Know. yeah, her family gave the uh, wild woods. Right, right. So, so that's wonderful. Okay, in that case, um, uh, I would make the motion to appoint um, Lane Sweeney um, as the cemetery commissioner to fill the term um, through town election in May of 2015. So moved. Well, the uh, requires a roll call vote. Roll call. All present. Ah, okay. <coughs> so let's do a roll call vote. Carol? I'm for her. Hope? Aye. Rob? Aye. Aye. Okay, so unanimously. <laughs> A lady is appointed, that's great. Wonderful choice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Okay, next item is a revised uh, operating budget for the uh, police department. These are budgets that we approved in uh, late December. Um, Mr. Dolly? Okay, Mr. Dolly. Mr. Mr. Renzi, or here? Um, Madam Chair, Chief McGowan discovered an omission in the original submission. He had left out the educational incentive for the newest officer. So this budget reflects the additional uh, roughly $10,000 for that educational incentive for that officer. And wh where does that show up? What is it <coughs> uh, education incentive shows up in the... Is that part of salary? That's part of full-time salary, full yes. As you recall, the contract provides that qualified officers receive 25 percent, a 20 percent increase in their pay for education incentive. Okay. 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 That was part of the negotiation with the um, health insurance. Yep. Okay. Good. So um, let's see. I'll make a motion on department number. Two oh one. Two oh one. To uh, approve salaries of one eight two zero eight six eight. Expenses of one one six five hundred for a total of one million nine thirty seven three sixty eight. Second. All in yeah. favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Have a cheap for catching that. We're going to pay in the neck later. Yes. Um, Okay, we opened up the warrant back in late 2014 for town meeting, uh, first Monday of May. And we've been working on this list for a while. The warrant is now closed. Um, we have it in front of us. Does it look like we have any citizen activity this year? No None. citizen articles? Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me, just to, for a quick review, um, everybody will be hearing a lot more about this over the next couple of months. Um, the first nine articles are our standard annual first nine articles. Then we have uh, an amendment uh, to the bylaws, the Dover Code for Council on Aging, to reduce the uh, number of um, members from, I think, 11 to 7. We have um, the second year of a renewed article for the Conservation Commission's uh, trust fund which had been used up with the purchase of a 287 Denim uh, two years ago. And I think last year was the first year in a while that they went back to refund, to start funding it again. We have two articles for the Dover Sherman Regional School Committee to cover different ways of paying for the uh, capital expenditures, which we've been doing every year as well. We have an article we should have uh, on the Minuteman. We have three. Three. I'm looking for three. Oh, one, two, and three. Right. 15, 14, 14 15, 15, 16. 16. We just said board of select. Right. right. So we have three articles, which you'll hear about a little bit later when uh, Robin gives us an update uh, relative to uh, Dover's relationship with the Minuteman uh, Regional Vocational School up in Lexington. Um, we have a, um, as been our habit um, over the last um, five, six, seven years, um, when we have very large uh, capital budget committee items, um, we tend to move them out of Article 5, which covers most of the capital budget requests, and put it in as its own article. 
So we have the renovation and facilities upgrade to the Carroll Community Center um, as a separate article. Uh, an amendment to Mass General Law for the Fire Department. Um, some administrative business for the Regional School Committee Retirement Notice and some real, a real property placeholder. And then the last group of articles are our standard uh, reserve fund and unpaid bills, supplemental appropriations. Right. So a uh, couple of items that might, might appear interesting, but many that are relatively routine. 26, which is 26, manageable number. Close to what we had, if not the same as last year. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, t 10 that aren't normal, and one of them probably go away, so nine or seven. So. Should we make our predictions now on how long the meeting's going to last? <laughs> I need some time to think about that. <laughs> okay, very good. And this will be conveyed to the Warren Committee? Yes. So forth, so. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So actually, in line with one of the articles, that we can are, get rid of one. Get rid of one. <laughs> <laughs> Great. There we go. So as we mentioned, there were there were two um, two articles for the regional school committee on on funding their capital budget. Uh, one article um, allows us to fund it um, through the um, uh, through borrowing, and the other through uh, free cash transfer. So. Um, after several years of working with the school committee, the regional school committee, and the uh, Sherpin selectmen, we finally, last year, for the first time, got a what's called an intermunicipal agreement or an intergovernmental agreement between uh, the towns of Dover and Sherburn to allow each town to fund its portion of the region's capital budget requirements uh, independently. So, if one town wanted to use free cash and another town wanted to borrow money for it. Uh, we could do it that way. Uh, it worked out well last year. And what we have in front of us this year is basically the same agreement um, with the date changes to, re to reflect the date change and I think of one or two words where we do member towns instead of towns. And the amount. And the amount is different. Good. Thank you. <laughs> and the amount. And what we're hoping is that since this will now be the second year like this, we're hoping that this just becomes a routine transaction every year where we change the dates, we change the amount, and the ordinance stays the same since it has now been declared legal and seems to operationally work very well, too. So this year, the capital budget request from the region is $358,000, and um, that's the total amount. Uh, there's an algorithm that's part of our regional school agreement, and Dover's share of that 358 is 194,931. So, Robin, do you have any other comments about the IGA? No, I'm just thrilled that you know, it's become a routine process. Oh, soon to be. Soon to be. Two years makes it routine? I think so. <laughs> Let's hope so. We've got fingers crossed. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, intergovernmental agreement um, that has been submitted to us for fiscal year 16 for a total expenditure of $358,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we should thank uh, Steve Bliss, our superintendent of schools, um, and the regional school committee for their help in making this year relatively routine. No, it's a Sherwood. Oh, okay. I almost signed for Sherwood. That would be interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next item is an update on the amendment to the Minuteman Regional Technical School Agreement. I will turn this over to Robin. I just wanted to give you a quick update. I attended the Dover School Committee meeting last evening. Um, I went over the amended agreement with them. Um, I, I went over, you know, right now our strategy to keep all three balls in the air, to continue to work with our attorney on understanding the risks involved with accepting the um, amended agreement. Also thinking about wording and a motion to opt out of the agreement in the event that we recommend to accept the agreement. And third, to work on an intergovernmental agreement between the town of Dover and the Minute Main Regional School. The intergovernmental agreement is where the Dover School Committee gets involved. The agreement would be between them and the Minuteman School Committee, Regional School Committee. Uh, Mr. Bliss was at, attended the meeting as well, and the Dover School Committee asked Mr. Bliss to um, get the assistant of a Dover member of the Regional School Committee to help us with the drafting the intermunicipal agreement. He, he, both he and the Dover School Committee felt that it made more sense for a regional school committee member to be part of these negotiations since it does impact their students and not the elementary school students. And the Dover School Committee just asked that we keep them in the loop with, with drafts and the, the direction in which we're heading. So I thought that was a very good plan. It made a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's how we're going to proceed. Wonderful. OK. I know that the uh, Minuteman has a uh, uh, meeting scheduled for the morning of February 6th. And to present their capital plan. To present the capital plan, which impacts some of the pro forma numbers that we've asked for, relics, so that we can help right. make a decision based at least with some kind of financial foundation. So um, I will be able to attend that. I appreciate okay. that. Yep. I'll right. And you know, we we continue to talk to members of the other six towns that are in the same position as us. And um, the Minuteman has been really good at reaching out and making sure to to see if we need anything. You know, they were able to run some of the numbers for us that were presented at our last meeting, which was very helpful. Um, you know, there's still some other things that both the town of Dover would like to see and some of the other towns in the region. So, you know, I'm, I'm confident that we'll be in a better position to make a recommendation come town meeting, but there's still too many balls in the air. Well, as we said when uh, they visited the last meeting, it behooves them to meet the needs of those six towns because if they don't get this approved through the current town meeting schedule, we can talk about another 12-month delay. And, and, and I think another 12-month delay really puts funding at risk for them, so. Yep. Yeah, through the SBA. And right, 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 right. Because it's been four years? Oh, I think. <laughs> at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we keep moving the process along. Wonderful. Well, I know this is taking up a lot of your time. So thank you very much for really grabbing this and delving into it. Um, the next item is an update on the Springdale Study Committee. Uh, so, um, after the town voted at the special town meeting in September and the town election in November to acquire the Springdale Park property, uh, we have acquired the property. Um, our commitment uh, to the citizens was to create a Springdale Study Committee, which we're now calling the SSC, uh, to, to study any and all possible uses of that property uh, with the goal of coming back in time for a town uh, discussion and vote at the May 2016 town meeting. So we appointed the committee at our selectmen's meeting in December. They had their first meeting uh, last week on the 14th. Um, it was very, very well attended. Um, all eight committee members made it, uh, which in itself <laughs> is uh, an achievement, um, along with liaisons from the Selectman's Office, the Council on Aging, the Planning Board, Open Space Committee, Capital Budget Committee, and Board of Health. The Warren Committee and CONCOM were not there only because they were holding concurrent meetings. So uh, that was a great first start, plus a couple of citizens uh, who came. And um, 
Um, they sort of introduced themselves, got to know each other a little bit. Um, I went through a lot of the administrative aspects of, of, of running a committee since none of them have really been involved much um, in, in committee work in Dover. Um, they discussed, they appointed Catherine White um, as chair. Interim. No, nope, as chair. As chair. As chair. Okay. As chair. Um, and uh, we discussed the roles of the liaisons uh, to the various committees. And the point was made that there are really two, two liaison roles, um, equally important. For those committees that have statutory and regulatory authority, like the Board of Health, the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, it's very important for um, their expertise and knowledge of Dover's rules and regulations uh, be available to the committee as they work on, on various options. Uh, basically, so that they understand what they're getting into with options and don't spend a lot of time on options that aren't feasible because they're totally against Dover's bylaws and, and so forth. Um, in addition to the liaison having the role of two-way communication to keeping their committees informed as well as the committee get feedback. Um, those liaisons from non-statutory committees like Open Space Committee, Council on Aging, are really there to, a capital budget, are there to ensure that the committees are kept informed so that when the final recommendation is made and the final report is issued, that their members have been brought along in the whole process, which is a long process, it's going to be a very detailed process, and we have a very uh, tight, aggressive time frame. So it, it's not feasible to think that if committees have not been kept apprised of the progress and understand the, the process that got them to the recommendations, that they were able to immerse themselves in the details and feel comfortable making a recommendation um, given the timeline that we have. So, um, so that was reviewed and discussed, and I think everybody understands their roles there. Um, and uh, at this point, they're going to try to meet almost every week, at least every two weeks. Um, to get started, uh, their first task will be to take that list that, uh, that you presented, Robin, at the, at the town meeting on the possible options and um, exploring those, drilling down into those, because each of those options has many other options, um, as well as gathering uh, options that uh, were not on that list. And that, that will be started at their meeting uh, tomorrow night. So well, once again, um, the email system that was used to keep interested citizens um, apprised of meetings and changes to the website um, is active. And um, if you're interested in making sure that you get on that list, just please contact Bill Clark, our IT support person, um, which you can do through the Dover website, doverma.org. Um, and he will get you on the email list. So you'll be uh, notified when there are meetings, notified when, as they start to get into more detail, um, various reports and studies are available for the citizens of Dover. Uh, they too want to be as tra transparent as um, our efforts were this summer. So I thought it was a great committee meeting. I did too. There. It was a very impressive group. I, the, the thing that was most striking was <coughs> all the different opinions that came out of the first meeting. So I, I really think we're going to they represent a cross-section of the town, and they are really going to look at every one of these options and debate it. I think their debate should be quite interesting. <laughs> a absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's, it's the only thing. You have a committee where everybody agrees with each other. It's right, like a particularly right. effective right. committee. So uh, um, I think I, had, I did a little demographic. Let me see if I can find it. The, um, the committee members, the eight committee members, represent four decades in age and six decades in town residence. Right. So just in that sense, it's, it's pretty, pretty wide and pretty broad. So that's the update on that. Um, next item is the real estate tax abatement request for the said property at 46 <laughs> Springdale Avenue. Mr. So, Ramsey. So we're not paying taxes on it. We're not paying taxes on it. <laughs> as you know, the town closed on this property uh, January 5th. And as a result, we now are responsible for taxes, but of course, Towns don't pay taxes to themselves. So this is really a technical request prompted by the assessors advising us of this, that we need to select we need to request an abatement for the remainder of fiscal 15 and also for fiscal 16 since we'll be on the property going forward. So have we voted abatements on all the property that the town owns? Uh, I'm not aware that we've ever done that before. I don't remember having an abatement on 287 Dedham that we just bought. Is it because, perhaps it's because this is residential? It's the timing, I think. Yeah. It's oh. the timing? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so we need to approve an abatement of taxes effective January 5th, 2015 through June 30th, 2015. And, and for fiscal 16 as fiscal well. Fiscal year 16. Okay. So I make that motion. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item was approval of the, uh, the town report. Uh, we had looked at that briefly at our last meeting, and um, we were uh, each going to go back and take another look at it. Because Mr. Dolly is not here tonight, um, I would like to suggest that we hold off on the, um, approving the town report until our next meeting, when all three of us are in attendance. I agree with that. And if you would just send our apologies to the committee and to Kathy to let her know that we'll get it to her as soon as we can. I will, tomorrow. Great, thank you. Um, the next item is the appointment of assistant accounting uh, with the unfortunate passing of our previous assistant accountant this past fall. Uh, we have had temporary support in the um, accounting office and I believe we have gone through our triple search out uh, here. Would you like to update this? Uh, yes, we have, Mrs. Lisbon. Um, we um, put out a job posting both publicly and posted internally, and uh, through the end of uh, 2014, we were accepting applications, and um, out of the pool of candidates, we would like to recommend Nancy Regano. Nancy um, actually came in to assist us on a temporary basis on the recommendation of our current town accountant. They had worked together at the Grand Lodge of Masons, for a number of years, um, and um, with Ms. Regano's layoff, uh, she is available. She's been doing consulting work, and uh, we interviewed her. She has many years of experience um, in accounting and bookkeeping, and uh, she is familiar with a variety of bookkeeping softwares, and uh, she has done a great job filling in temporarily and is most interested in um, the job on a permanent, full-time basis. Nothing like the advantage of having a, a part-time employee who right. can actually watch and get to know. I, it's a... Qualified for the by job. fire, too. That's ideal. That's right. I, ideal. We, we were joking that we took her for a test drive. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it was a nice, smooth ride. Um, no, she really has... Um, it's a, a very steep learning curve. She's very rapidly familiarized herself with the software and is interested in expanding into other areas of the accounting duties in that office that are perhaps beyond those that the uh, former assistant was um, tasked with. Mm -hmm. so, so will she need to learn the KBS system? She, she is. is. Yes, yeah, she's, she's done a great job. It's a fairly complex yeah. process and um, she's right in there. She's hard working. She's focused, dedicated, and uh, clearly looking at her job history, her last job, she was in 18 years, the one before that, which is at the very back of the packet, she was in for eight years. So she's not someone who moves around. She's interested in um, committing herself to the town of Dover if she is appointed to the position. And what are our hours? How long is she working a week? She, uh, she would work 35 hours a week, mm -hmm. 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, um, as our other yep. full-time um, hourly employees do. Well, it looks good. Yeah, looks, she is, looks yes, really good. Yeah, she, she is great. She really um, is a, a, good a good fit in all <coughs> these things. Excellent. Absolutely, yeah. Robin, would you like to make a motion? I would, I would <coughs> like to make a motion that we appoint Nancy L. Regano as the assistant accountant. Second. All those in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. And great. She's already here, so we don't have to wait. Thank you. No, we'll give her the news in the morning. That's great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Greer, for your work on uh, the candidate search. Welcome. Special licenses? We haven't these in a while. Oh, there's a few. Yeah. So I'll just read them all out and we can approve them as, uh, uh, as a totality. Uh, 
Connor Center on January 21st, potential active request. Um, the Connor Center on January 22nd. Connor Center on September 7th for a birthday party. And an event, um, as I said, on March 14th. Um, is it the Hort? It's at Elm El El Bank. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Where am I see? Oh, there we go. Elm okay. Bank. Um, uh, for about Bitsville. Okay, so we have four. I move we approve all four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two for you. Memorial Day weekend, 2015. This is a letter from Chief McGowan, who has met with the sponsor. We'll have an officer assigned on detail to the event. They will have medical staff on site. Based at Poisson Farm. Running the grounds of Poison Farm and it, there's a working Lincoln. there's a working there's a walking trail there. Ah. In order to talk to Mike Francis and Merrill over at Poison and TTOR. Start at eight o'clock. So it's gonna take place entirely on the grounds of Poison Farm. Yeah. Percentage of the registration fees will be noted, donated to Poisson Farm. Hmm. About 250 runners. Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, they have a mile and a half run for kids and walkers. Right. Oh, how nice. I assume they figured out parking. Presume they have. Okay. Well, oh, there's a map. You, I didn't, yeah, I didn't if you look keep at, looking I at my where, package. Uh, when Boise Farm has their events, the, the meadow that's to the left of right. the barn is used for parking. parking so. right. The event coordinator worked very closely with the chief on this. Originally, the way that it was contemplated um, was not it would have interfered with uh, Poisset Street traffic, and this was satisfactory to everybody involved, so they, they worked over a period of months on this. Oh, wow. What a great yeah. run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Be a lot of fun. this is going to be fun, especially the one for kids. It's a nice yeah. flat trail there. Well, it's such a beautiful area to walk right, around. Right, right. And then you can go look at the animals. Yeah. Great. So would you like to make a motion, Robin? I would. I would like to make a motion that we approve the trail run scheduled for Memorial Day weekend of 2015 <laughs> as outlined in the package. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is approval of the minutes of our December 18th meeting. I just noticed Jackie isn't here this evening. She usually comes to all our meetings. Oh, that's true. <laughs> she was at the uh, Springdale Trade Committee. <coughs> Mr. Dolly was busy at this meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the meeting when we approved. Uh, Almost all of the budgets. Right. Wow. Two and a half pages worth. And we appointed the Springdale <laughs> Study right. Committee. Yeah. And we executed the bans for 46. It was a very busy it meeting. Was. And the solid waste contract. 
and it was done in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So I move we approve the minutes of December 18th as submitted. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mona. You're welcome. Yeah. And then we have the minutes of December 6th. This is um, the meeting where we had uh, uh, Ford Spalding and uh, Dan Matthews from the uh, we need a board selectman coming to talk about Minutemen, uh, which we discussed earlier this evening. We reviewed the first draft of the annual town meeting articles that we finalized tonight. A couple of operating and capital budget items. That was it. I have one tiny, and I'm not even sure it's correct. I think the intergovernmental agreement is an IGA, not an okay. IMA. Because yeah. I got corrected. Because okay. <laughs> I yes, always refer to we it to the IGA. Right, right, right. right. Yep. And Dan Matthews corrected me. So with that, I move we approve the minutes of January 6, 2015 as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's it for the uh, formal agenda tonight. Robin, any comments? I commend you, Madam Chair. One hour <laughs> earlier than scheduled. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that Mr. Dolly is back here? I wasn't going to say it. I was going to say it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, anything else, folks? No. No. Nope. There's no, no public here tonight. comments. I have nothing either. So um, I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good night.